So joining us is Bob Dahl, as we mentioned, Chief Equity Strategist at Nuveen, and our CNBC Senior Markets Commentator, Mike Santoli. Uh, Mike, what do, what do you think? We had someone earlier saying that the inverted yield cor curve has predicted seven of the last four recessions. <laughs> right. Uh, and, and it tells you something about the environment, not necessarily that uh, it's a very reliable predictor of inflation. It tells you that the economy is in a stall. If you looked at the actual shape of the curve in terms of where it's inverted, where it's not inverted, you could also argue the market saying Fed will cut probably engineer a soft landing because it doesn't seem as if uh, the whole curve is inverted. Now, that's getting a little bit too cute and precise in terms of what the message is, uh, but I think but the backdrop seven is... Out seven, seven out of seven, seven predicted rate cutting rate cycle. Cycle. Right, cycle. exactly. That's what it's saying most vociferously right now, is that, Sometimes I mean, the way the two-year trades, I mean, by almost by definition, it's handicapping um, rate cuts within that window of, of two years. Did you see oil today in, in the journal story? There's and, all and, oil supply. And la and last, but last week it was copper yeah. means oil's next. And, a, and, I mean, there's a lot happening in, is, simultaneously. But is, is oil a supply or a demand picture right now? It's always well, both, right? a huge amount of supply that's been building up in the United you know, States. That's, how we, that's what we say now, but it's, our, it's been weak. And it, you remember when we were trying to figure out whether it was really supply? And it doesn't always, actually matter to the bond market. it's sentiment, The too. bond market treats the price as the signal for what right. Right, inflation exactly. is going to do on a top line level. Hey, Bob, for a long time, we've uh, the market, I think, has looked at things as saying interest rates are low, and that's great news for stocks because interest rates relative to stocks means you should be putting your money in stocks. Are we reaching a point where you think, okay, interest rates are low, and that's a bad news for stocks because it means we're headed into an economic slowdown? Look, a, a flat or inverted yield curve is not necessarily bad news. It's not good news. And we all know the long lead from an inversion to the, the actual recession, if in fact we're going to have one, is one to three years. So it tells me I've got to look at later cycle events. It tells me I need to be worried about earnings. Look, if the Fed's going to cut rates sometime in the back half of this year, I'm going to have earnings disappointments all over the place. Why? Because it would signal that the economy is not strong enough to sustain interest rates that are still pretty low. But wait a second, is it causal low. or not? I mean, like, if, 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 you, if the Fed's cutting rates, it's because the economy's weak. So we're going to have lousy earnings anyway because the economy's weak. What, what, what really so, is so I think for the stock market, the lousy earnings will, will play hard on, on the market. Do you think that's a real story, though? I, mean, I we, do. I do. think that we're going to have estimates lousy are still uh, Double-digit earnings growth next year, I, I, I just can't find it. Yeah, two, three percent this year. Yeah, I'll buy that story. But back to 12 percent next year. I don't know where that comes from. Which, and so I think that's that's the concern. And that's, that's why the market's stuck. And just in terms of how the market has repriced. So since October, September, October, when the stock market hit its peak back then, uh, estimates for 2019 and 2020 are down about six percent each. The S&P is down about 5% off its high. So the market hasn't become really any cheaper, but you've had made an adjustment to the stated earnings. But we are looking supposedly on paper for the second half comeback, right? That's when the earnings are supposed to pick up again. The second half starts in a month. So we're not necessarily seeing, you know, it's not like this hope for thing, don't worry, it'll get better soon uh, down the road. It, it's it's got to happen here and now. So I think that's what the market's trying to struggle with. Sure. Can I just point out the market has not been the greatest gauge of growth over the past several months at least. Remember back in December when everybody was sure there was going to be a recession um, and then we printed a 3.2 percent GDP number. Right. Um, we're running one and a half to two which is at or around what trend should be. So I would just when you said predicted seven of the last four recessions I, I chuckled at that which is sort of laughable, right? Because, I mean, it's good to be beyond 50 percent, but it's certainly not 100 percent. If you look at that chart, as Bob said, there's a very long lead time, and you have to be negative for it, it, it to be an actual signal. So I'm not quite so pessimistic and quite so sure the market has either the Fed or growth right here. Well, I was going to say, the Fed, do you think the next move is a, is a I, great cut? I, I can only take them at their unbelievably consistent word. I was reading something this morning of every single Fed official who has said, we're in a good place and we, we ought to wait and see. And it is remarkable how, like, I don't know, the Mormon Tabernacle Choir, they're all singing from the same uh, uh, piece of music right now. And I, I really think that's where they are. And I don't think they know where to go. And I also don't think they understand this critical question. Are tariffs inflationary or deflationary? Does it mean weaker growth? You have very, very high consumer confidence now. You have well, very it could be strong jobs. Inflationary and weaker growth. 
I mean, I, I mean that would be your stagflationary. Uh, well, I don't know what the opposite of stagflation is. What would it be? And, and we can't also forget the fact that two and a quarter ten-year comes in part from the fact that rates elsewhere are zero. Yeah. You know, if in, I'm in Germany, I, I can get zero. No, or less than, I can go over to the less than zero, like the buck. Yeah. It's, it's that, that's actually, Bob, large. one of the upsides of what's happened is our spread with Germany has narrowed. It's narrowed has a little bit. Right, it's still like a historic 240 right. base points, but right. it's a little tighter. Bob, very quickly, what stocks do you move into as a result? If you think uh, that this is late cycle, I, I think you just need a little more caution, a little higher quality, a little better balance sheets. Pay attention to free cash flow. Um, be careful of companies that are over levered, that are using negative free cash flow. Companies are investing in their future for growth rather than giving all the money back in a buyback. Um, I want those reinvestment for organic growth kinds of companies.